And I also I also learned about the horror of the Holocaust and the terrible urgency it brought to the journey home to Israel. For much of my childhood, I lived with my grandparents. My grandfather had served in World War II, and so had my great uncle. He was a Kansas boy who probably never expected to see Europe, let alone the horrors that awaited him there. And for months after he came home from Germany, he remained in a state of shock, alone with the painful memories that wouldn't leave his head. You see, my great uncle had been part of the 89th Infantry Division, the first Americans to reach a Nazi concentration camp. They liberated Ordruf, part of Buchenwald, on an April day in 1945. The horrors of that camp go beyond our capacity to imagine. Tens of thousands died of hunger, torture, disease, or plain murder, part of the Nazi killing machine that killed six million people. When the Americans marched in, they discovered huge piles of dead bodies and starving survivors. General Eisenhower ordered Germans from the nearby towns to tour the camp so they could see what was being done in their name. He ordered American troops to tour the camp so they could see the evil they were fighting against. He invited congressmen and journalists to bear witness, and he ordered that photographs and films be made. Explaining his actions, Eisenhower said he wanted to produce first-hand evidence of these things. If ever in the future there develops a tendency to charge these allegations merely to propaganda. I saw some of, I saw some of those very images at Yad Vashem, and they never leave you. And those images just hint at the stories that survivors of the Shoah carry with them. Like Eisenhower, each of us bears witness to anyone and everyone who would deny these unspeakable crimes or ever speak of repeating them. We must mean what we say when we speak the words, never again. It was just a few years after the liberation of the camps that David Ben-Gurion declared the founding of the Jewish State of Israel. We know that the establishment of Israel was just and necessary, rooted in centuries of struggle and decades of patient work. But 60 years later, we know that we cannot relent, we cannot yield, and as President, I will never compromise when it comes to Israel's security.